How's it going, everybody? Joe with the Get Bit Podcast, the podcast for blurs, nerds, and everything in between. You got a fan, and we're going to yak about it. Will, unfortunately, could not be with us tonight uh, due to a family emergency. We hope all goes well on his end and that his family is safe and everything goes well. With me, as always, I got... You're muted. I'm muted to Far High TV. <laughs> uh, so we got a lot of news for you tonight. Uh, as always, we try to source as close as we can, possibly can. So we will jump right into a couple things. First off, Agatha Longreview. Uh, did you get a chance to watch it? I saw it. Um, were you surprised by the ending? Surprised? No. Annoyed a little bit because I'm like, I'm not about to watch this dude, this kid, somebody's toddler, this teenage tantrum throwing kid. On a solo journey for the witch's road. I don't let this be a fantasy or like his imagination, uh, like a family guy cutaway. I, I'm gonna need you to bring everybody back like immediately. I mean, it sucked that we killed the Asian lady off first. I mean, technically second, but she was like the first witch death we got, which kind of bummed me out. But uh, I mean, I saw this coming a mile away. I pretty much guessed who he was right off the bat. We're not going to try and spoil it for you guys, but uh, it kind of cemented who it was in this episode when other things happened. Uh, he does look good with a crown. I'll say this much. Yeah. And I kind of figured that uh, she was going to come back in the somehow in the series. I'm sure they're not dead, though. I'm sure they got another way out. Uh, people are predicting that this is possibly an X Men or an X Three, whereas their souls are just inhabiting other randoms. In that, this person we are with right now may not be who this character stays as before the show is over. I mean, we've already even mentioned though X- this though, and even though X Three made that a deleted scene for some reason, yeah. I mean, we already did bring up Mephisto, and technically it is because of him replacing the twin souls into another set of boys that they are actual people. So, possibility. It is a possibility this is genuinely one of the twins. And then the the Asian witch, my whole thing with that was just like, what? What? Very much went to the anime school of power. I was like, nobody, why is nobody stopping this? Throw a book, like flip a table, so like get between the two, tackle Agatha. Like, why did y'all just let this go on for so long? Yeah, that was the other thing that really annoyed me about that. And then when she had the spark of her orange magic, I'm like, are you able to give it back? Like, it very much feels like you could if you wanted to right now. I don't think she can. Also, finding out the her power is kind of a uncontrolled knee-jerk reaction? Because it seemed like she actually genuinely didn't want that to happen, but couldn't turn it off. She could be like Bishop, where she just gets it no matter what. I've always wondered that about Bishop, because it's always to his advantage in X-Men, but I'm like, does it ever happen to where it's like, okay, please stop, and you can't turn it off? Yes, that is actually how he has been killed uh in the future actually i think that's how they killed him in days of future past they overfed him okay i thought he nuked him i thought he did that on purpose i know he got like it seemed like he got overblown but i thought he basically sent himself out which even then i'm like you are like still a bit too useful to just be nuked taking yourself out like maybe after storm got got but you have a lot more use than these kids you left on the front lines yeah, so I mean, Bishop does have like a a mount he can take before he at, before he if he can't discharge the actual energy itself. I, he has more of store and uh, redirect rather than absorb and store and redirect. Like he has to discharge that energy at some point. It's similar to the movie I just saw. Yes, um, but yeah, the... of which, good segue. <laughs> Uh, we both enjoyed it. Sounds like. Uh, oh, you saw us... it today too. 
Uh, I did not see the My Hero movie. I was talking about Agatha. Okay, uh, I was making sure. We, I was, I was... we, we enjoyed Agatha. Uh, I did. I was hoping they would play more to the horror... Uh, 80s horror slasher aspects since the uh, Coven 7 were there and they were all dressed like camp counselors from a 1980s slasher fic. That, that was my, that's what I said. I said, we're dressed like we're at Camp Crystal Lake. And when they said, like, punish Agatha, as childish as this show has been, I was fully expecting to just like tie her up with rope and like whipped cream pie to the, like something embarrassing camp counselors would do just to make her feel like great shame in front of whatever spirits were watching. And then we went full left with her mom coming back to basically shame her in front of everybody. And then her son also coming back to. Also a little bit of the evil dead. Her, her possessed form was very clearly a deadite. I'm surprised when she, when she got possessed, I'm like, does your spine not hurt after that? Or. And even so, if the spirits are mad at you, why are they attacking everybody else? Like we, we, we're just here for the ride, lady. <laughs> so Agatha wouldn't turn out to be a good episode this week, just with some few shortcomings, but still ultimately enjoyable and a little bit predictable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My Hero Academia put out a third movie. Does this take place after the? Manga, like immediately after the manga, like right before the war, like where does this take place? It's before I know, like, the war. Right before the war. Okay. So this takes place between the resting period of the end of last season and beginning of this season. And it very much feels like it's not a bad movie. I want to get that across. But there's very much, it toes the line like very quickly and almost back to back to back. Of is that a reference or, or hey or hey, not so much is it? It toes the line very much and very often and very quickly with hey, cool, that's a reference or do we just did this in like a whole nother series or in this series? Why are we going back to this so fast? Um, like if you've seen Jujutsu Kaisen or One Piece film Red, you're very much gonna be like, so we're right back to doing this. Um, it's it's very much like they wanted to crank out a fourth movie and thankfully the staff were all people who cared. Like, it, it could have easily been the Kill the Justice League of the Arkham franchise fourth game we didn't need. Uh. It's saved by fans working on this movie and a staff who actually cared to make an effort. Because even, even at the end of most of these films where they have the credits rolling and you see the post whatever in a little slideshow... None of that. We literally fade to black and just roll credits. We we literally just like, day is saved. Done. And then the end credit scene is really no payoff because it's like, we're already at that point. If you guys had put this out before this current season, that would be cool. But that the end credit scene is just there. And I don't know if it's been intentional or unintentional, but the last three My Hero movies have been almost equivocal to what's happening in the show. So what is the first one? Two heroes. Uh, boy is inspired by his hero, and they get to fight side by side one time before he basically has to hang it up. Second movie, these kids are officially on their own. They have no way to contact the pros. It's either nut up, shut up, and or shut up and die. And that's kind of where they were in the show because All Might was retiring, and they all basically had to step it up. Third movie, this is now a global problem that you all are facing with this one-off bad guy. And that's where the show was moving to, to, hey, this is now a worldwide issue we're expanding to, and we maybe need to talk to other heroes, which you actually see these other heroes from other countries in action. And they've done a good job in the show of making all three of those canning. And then there's this movie that just kind of squeezes itself in there with no real, like, payoff whatsoever. It, it's... It's if you like my hero, it's a it's a decent film. It just they didn't do a good job of making this fit. Okay, so since we're gonna be talking about Dragon Ball in a bit, and I've yet to see this movie, is this dude? I guess we'll call him Bad Might. Is he a Turles or is he a Goku Black? Uh, he's a Turles. He's a Turles with. <sighs> Put it this way. He is Turles if Turles had similar powers of Edward and Alphonse Elric. 
or if you played, um, do you ever play Arkham City? Yes. Thomas Elliot. Ah. So a little bit of Thomas Elliot with his own stuff going on. Uh, what was the other question I was going to ask? Does it adhere to the movie continuity? So does Bakugo like somehow retap into the all for one again? Become Super Bakugo? There is some moment. I think this was just at the end of this movie. They clearly wanted to give Deku, Bakugo, and Todoroki the, like the, the the trio standoff against the bad guy, and they kind of do that. And then there's that one point where they kind of give Deku a boost and literally they both just disappear. Like, I don't... It was a cool sequence, but I need to watch it back to feel like, what what just happened? Because I couldn't tell if they were using the flames to fan them. It just gets real, uh, like, Luffy and Kaido-ish, where it gets like, they lose all the detail, but it's just color palettes. And ah. he doesn't really tap into it, but he does have some good moments. Um... I feel like they revisit that a lot during the show recently, but even though they don't really acknowledge it, it, everybody gets a good moment. The fights were very much up to par to my hero standards. It's just the plot, the villain, and all the references they threw in that just, I'm like, all right, are we paying homage to other shows or did we just run out of ideas in time? That is tough to say. There was actually, surprisingly, last week a one-shot My Hero, uh, My Hero chapter. I don't know if that connected to the movie or if that was just a another little snippet of the My Hero universe right before it goes away permanently. I think so. It might have been because they did one for World Heroes, and I, I still have it. It's pretty good. It's pretty much like a mini chapter of the kids. And basically, like a data book of the bad guys, the designs, like design notes. It's if you went to the movie early enough, it was a cool little piece to have for the collection. Gotcha. But then they also, my hero movies have also adopted this formula. The last three films, like if you've seen the last two movies, you've kind of seen this one where new kid, new power, pivotal to the plot, or is in danger, go. So they, they got a formula they stick to, but they don't really do anything different for it to add to the overall story. Whereas the first movie we know is canon because they mentioned the kids from America or they mentioned the friends from America and Deku still has the red gauntlets. Second movie, um, we see Bakugo's eye still has remnants of one for all. And we do, I don't know if it's been animated yet, but there is a fight where you do see the kids from that movie watching the fight on television uh, third, movie, third movie, we've actually seen the heroes from across the globe and how much they want to help All Might because they recently just had to help All Might's friends in the third movie. This one, I don't... If they try to... If there's any payoff from it, I will be shocked. Still, not a bad film. It's just we've done a lot of it already. Okay, so not a bad film, but a bit predictable. Predictable, reused... And... You're either you're either gonna be a you're either gonna be a fan or scream WTF at some moments. Uh, speaking of WTF, Dragon Ball Diamond dropped. Actually, a lot of Dragon Ball dropped uh, today. Uh, for those unaware, the and I don't know how you're not unaware, uh, Sparking Zero and Dragon Ball Dima uh, did a simo drop across the world today. Uh, a lot of us got to play yesterday or three days ahead of it. Uh, did you pick I'm, yours up or did you download it? I downloaded it. Okay, because I found out. Hold on. This is why I like. I didn't even know GameStop was doing this, and I wish they would have told more people. So I knew you got like the Daima Goku, who apparently is only in Japanese for like, I think the next month. They have not recorded his English lines. Correct. Uh, but yeah, if you went to GameStop, you actually got a Spark. So this is the steelbook art, by the way. Like they split it in half. Go, my brother got the collective. Edition. Goku on the front, Vegeta ah. back. But this, you actually got a poster from GameStop if you pre-ordered it, which That's I didn't cool. even know they were doing because I don't think they have it listed. I've already watched the uh, Rate the Supers. Uh, luckily, my favorite movie villain, who is still actually Turles for all intents and purposes, but I still say he had 
one of the best movies because he had some of the best fights in that movie. He still has the best super in the game because as I'm playing it, I'm starting to agree more and more there's big explosions but very little impact on these supers. Like, it just doesn't feel like a heavy blow has been dealt, just a big explosion with either a lot of particles or a lot of smoke. Just It just kind of lacks that oomph of impact. But other than that, I am really, really enjoying the game. I'm hearing uh, Chalcedo of all people is absolutely... Chal I'm hearing Chalcedo and Yajirobi are absolutely busted. Oh, yeah. No, I, I'm not surprised. I'm sure Chalcedo will be banned in tournaments, and Yajirobi, I have no idea. Apparently, he <laughs> Alt skills is sensu bean and somebody one of my friends is like I played with somebody and they popped five. So I had a, a broken character, but he weared me down so much because he just kept getting back up. I almost lost. Well, oh, there we go. Uh Dragon Ball Diamond also dropped today. Um I enjoyed it. Uh this was kind of like a particular episode of Dragon Ball GT. Right before Vegeta becomes Super Saiyan 4, where he has like an introspection about his life. This was very much a first half of the episode is let's show the Majin Buu saga with new animation and some commentary. And then we get actual Daima stuff. Um I I liked where it went. I'm now confused on how. Certain things happen because they've retconned for a third time how Kaioshin and Kabito, uh, or maybe it's the second time, Kaioshin and Kabito unfused. Uh, we yeah, meet we, we Kai have, yeah, Potar fusion is just no longer a permanent stick. I've accepted that. I've accepted that a long time ago. Like most of the stuff that happens with the Kais is stuff we could easily undo with a wish, and everyone just forgets because. King Kai's had a halo for like 20 years now, and no one's gotten rid of it. Even though they did make a specific episode about that, but... Exactly. Um, also, I don't know what the rules are with Beerus when Kaioshin has a brother and sister, so like, if they die, does he also die? Because I know Kaioshin is directly life force, directly linked to Beerus' life force. But since he has family, if we get rid of the family, do we also get rid of Beerus? I or is it just it is, Kaioshin because he has the job? Yeah, I think I think Supreme Kai, kind of like Source of Supreme, I think whoever holds that rank, title, and power specifically is tied to them. Because if he had siblings who could stay alive, I feel like Beerus would have had time to stop Goku Black, whereas they confirmed in Trunks' timeline he basically died in his sleep. Yeah, because they killed Kaioshin, so he, he dies in his sleep. Yeah, he he dies because yeah, because Supreme the Kai got kills, himself I think. killed. He got himself killed fighting Majin Buu. Yeah. So their world was basically godless for that entire reality. Which you would think they would have some kind of failsafe or something in place if a god of destruction is to die, but time is so irrelevant to them, like they probably didn't even have time to notice, or Weiss just was slacking on the job. I'm not sure yet. Anyways, I he introduces new characters. I like the Demon Realm. I like that we're finally exploring the Demon Realm because that thing was mined for gold years ago for Dragon Ball Super, for Dragon Ball Heroes, the trading card game in Japan. I don't know um, why they don't bring the show over. You have like a hundred and thirty, what, like a hundred and thirty parts of just like before Sparking Zero. That's the show that's like, hey, here's all the fan things you're never gonna get canon, but we'll just throw them in there just because. Like, I think there's an episode where Goku, Gohan, and Bardock all basically get to fight together. I actually just watched that. That is the Interdimensional Spirit in Time Tournament. Yeah, I know they've had arcs and stuff. I'm, like, I'm still trying to finish the Dragon Ball Heroes um, 3DS game because Broly won't leave me the hell alone. Um, <laughs> it's but, great yeah. until the final arc. Yeah. Because the like final arc uses in the Switch graphics engine to animate the final season, final arc. Yeah, they went like super 3D or something like that they went with it, didn't they? No, they went away from traditional animation and they just used all the character art and graphics from the Switch game. Super that's Dragon what, Ball. Okay, yeah, that's what it looked It looked like a, a low... It looked like the arcade game cutscenes they have for the cuts. Yes. yes. 
I, I've been watching it. It's confusing, but fan servicey and super enjoyable. Even though Bardock refuses to tell any of uh, Goku who he is, and Goku's like, "Wow, you look like me." And Bardock's like, "Don't don't worry about that. We got big other things we got to worry about." <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know if there's a licensing issue, but it just feels like uh, it feels like that IP is a gold mine. They are not they're, they're sitting on, and I don't know why they don't use it like that. Because they advertised like the first ten or eleven episodes, and then they just stopped. But then it kept going, and I'm just like, why don't y'all dub this? Y'all randomly went back and did the second half of the One Piece Dragon Ball Torico crossover, but and. We just never touch this show that is technically making new material and it's just fan service gold. And I don't, I see why they kind of want to get away from Toei right now. I, I, I'm I, starting to understand. I mean, it's all on YouTube, all 65 episodes. Right. Nobody stops them either. Somebody, somebody is willingly letting those stay up and not yanking it down at all, which means they either don't care, don't see it as valuable, or whoever's running the copyright department is an unsung hero over there. Because it, it just Tony Taro himself. Yeah, I I just I, I don't know, man. I I know there's rumblings of them wanting to get away from their parent company, and if this is why, I can see it. I mean, we do have confirmation that uh, Super Dragon Ball's Heroes has also ended in the manga, and that all the characters and it is drawn by Toyo Taro, uh, the manga itself, and. He aged up everybody into adults, and the adults are now cheering on the kids for the new card game, uh, arcade game, Super Dragon Ball Divers. Is that actually out, uh, or is that a thing that's out, or is that just in the series? That is a thing that is both in the series and out, because Heroes has ended. So, like, Beat and the other kid are now adults running the arcade they grew up playing in and oh, right, new, right, right. I forgot we were the new people. kids that have yeah. yet to be named and they're the protagonists for Super Dragon Ball Divers. I keep forgetting we're, we're still in an arcade in that show. Yep. So back to Daima. Um, I love that the dragon was super picky. That was my favorite thing about the whole episode is Shenron was really picky about these, these things. I still got to get through it. I have not sat down to burn through it today. So, someone makes the wish, obviously, to turn everybody into kids. And Shenron even goes, like, what age are we talking about here in children? Like, so I need a number. And then <laughs> they actually get annoyed. It's like, they even tell Shenron to his face, like, God, you're picky. It's like, make him every first grade. It's like, all right, what about the people that are already kids? Sure, make make them babies. <laughs> I love that Shenron is set. Uh, we got a sassy Shenron. It is the best thing. So with this, do we um? Damn, what was I about to ask? Damn, I just lost it. Because I know people have been saying like it's almost like GT all over again, but I'm curious. Hey. That's what it was. Are we crossing over, or are we technically? Can it, or canonically with Sandland since we're in the demon realm? No, so this canonically takes place immediately after maybe a few months after the Boot Saga. Oh, for because sake. Trunk celebrates his ninth birthday this first episode. Okay. And then they even bring up Krillin even brings up something from Super. It's like, you're nine. Why are you so short? And then Goku's like, oh. We don't hit a growth spurt until 15. We stay super small until then. Fair enough, because I know Super is almost right before the final tournament or whatever. Yeah. So this is like right... This is even before Battle of Gods. Okay. So it's, I think the timeline is now Dragon Ball... Uh, Dragon Ball... Dragon Ball Z... Daima, Yo, Son Goku, friends are back. Um, what's it called? Um, Battle of the Super. Gods. Oh, yeah. Battle of the Gods. Super, F. Broly, and then uh, End of Z. Okay. 
So this is kind of GT-esque because Goku's going to be going to the Demon Room because they've also set up that the Demon Room has its own Dragon Balls. There's only three of them, but the Namekian creator created three unbeatable guards uh, that no one in the Demon Room can beat in order to access the Dragon Ball. I'm very curious to see if we get a return of Tails or if we get a new version of the Black Star Dragon Balls. Gesundheit. Thank you. Um, well, I don't. we don't know what the... I know I can tell you uh, no Black Star, but we don't know what the Demon Realm Dragon Balls are capable of. Okay, so... And how many episodes is this show? Probably 26, I imagine. Okay, so at least we're we're in for a good time. I've I've missed the uh the weekly Dragon Ball discussions and shout out to everybody who started doing reactions and stuff when Super started and was told your channel would fail when it ended, and now you get to do a victory lap. I am very happy for all of you. I mean, a lot of people are watching this because remember, on initial viewing, a lot of people were really down on this because of the whole turning back to kids thing. But we're all going to watch it because this is the last official work of Toriyama. So, of course, no matter how much they complain. No, I really enjoyed Daima. Hopefully, you will when you watch it. Sparking Zero is fun, exceedingly harder than what it used to be, which is good. Um, a lot of people are having a lot of trouble with Great Ape Vegeta. I, I don't know what it is. I don't have a problem with them. Uh, I've seen people, some people say they got it first try. I've watched other people struggle. It, it, all of, all of the above is funny to me. It's so I, 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 I like that they made a game that is fun yet challenging, but not having people rage like I have been on Final Fantasy Rebirth all damn weekend. Well, I guess the only problem I'm having right now is there are three different ways to counter in this game. Like, three different buttons, like forward and, cir forward and square, R1, and circle, and sometimes R3 all counter uh, certain things. So, you have to remember in your head which button, you, which button counters what move. It's kind of frustrating, in all honesty. I can see that because there's a challenge in there's a challenge in Rebirth where you basically do like simulated fights as like little it's almost like Final Fantasy Rock and Sock and Robots. Yes. And you gotta you gotta remember do you dodge left, down, or up on left and right side. But some of the the punches they throw look so similar to each other you can't counter it. And I officially just started cheating where you just spam the pause button, and I went to go see someone else beat it, and they all were doing the same thing. I'm like, cool. So we all came to the same conclusion that, like, this was, this was trying to do the counters for this was more annoying than it needed to be. I will say Great Egg Vegeta is much easier when you have Goku, Piccolo, Tien, and Krillin all in one fight to continuously spam and continue, uh, keep the life bars full. I'm also seeing the. Uh, I like that they they have like the little fun systems of the uh, the three wives now doing the uh, the character reviews. Yes, Chi Chi is very hung up on everybody being blonde and poor Pan or not Pan, but poor Videl is just like. Yeah. Well, I don't know any of these people that well, but I'm going to try and talk about them. Look, okay. yeah, I've, I've seen some of them. Well, the one where. Uh, they, they reignite the flame or, or issues between Yamcha and Bulma. It's like, oh, yeah, I dumped him. He was cheating on me. Which is funny, because if you play the DLC for Kakarot, Yamcha tells everyone that he's the victim. He, like, there's a little dialogue where he's like, it's like, this girl was like, I don't know, he helped somebody. He's like, she was struggling, so I opened the door or I helped her with her bags, and then Bulma came over and just started screaming her head off. And I'm like, oh, so this is what happened with you guys' relationship. She was she was a clingy girlfriend, but I think like Glamcha like legitimately cheated on her. Um, what other Dragon Ball thing was super fun in this? Making your own custom battle is quite something. I will say that I've done one. 
it's out there. You can find it. It's Super Broly taking on Classic Broly and KO. I just call it like the battle for the bi biggest green. Are you? Can you add custom oh. text to those too, or is that just um... add custom what? Do you had custom text? Because I've seen some of like the dialogue, and I'm like, are people typing these? Or so you get a word bank, and then you can fill in certain words. Okay, because I was curious to how they were going to do that part of it. So you can like get a screenshot, or it gives you a screenshot. Uh, you set up intros, you set up egg, uh, windscreens and lost screens, dialogue before the match starts. Uh, so, like, for example, Chilai, it, there's no voice work in it, uh, but Chilai says, like, oh, uh, I hope Brawly's okay, and then uh, it says, like, he has to take on both uh, the other Brawly and Kale, and they're all in their legendary forms, so it's all the green Super Saiyans. Okay. I'll get my hands on it all eventually. Uh, you do get anime music. There actually is an anime sound pack out there. I've heard they're selling the music in the game now. They are. They're like fourteen ninety nine, but it's like Jesus. Oh, that's actually not too bad because it's like all the Z songs, all the GT uh, one pack. I think is all the Super Z songs, and then the other pack. I and maybe Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z is one pack, and GT and Super is the other pack. You get a uh, Dragon Ball Super uh, Tournament of Power for free. But if you play it, uh, you're not able to do any recording. I feel, okay, that's, that's going to be interesting because I feel like there are other people are going to take that and find a way to license other music, official music into the game. I know the Japanese are the most anal about it. But I wouldn't be surprised to see other companies or labels try to weasel their way in that way. And then when that game gets shut down or goes offline, by the way, all that music you own, no, you don't. Yeah, we can definitely recommend the Dragon Ball stuff to you guys. Uh, moving on over into news. We have a fair bit of news. We got as close to the source as we could with everything. So we're going to be looking at stuff from James Gunn's personal Instagram because if there's anything we're going to be talking about superhero-wise, it's from James Gunn. And what's an easier way to confirm than the man himself because he's always on his Instagram confirming stuff. Right. Uh, we also got a news from Deadline, so we know that's on the Up and Up and PlayStation blog itself. So we will swap over... So we got the PlayStation Plus catalog for October. Uh, this is going to be on the premium and extra uh, ability, or not, uh, tiers. Excuse me. Uh, so for the extra, which is what I'm in, we get Dead Island 2, which is fine. Uh, point, two Point Campus, this is one of those click build games. I, I don't know. Uh, Dark Picture, Devil and Me. I don't know. This is more spooky game stuff. Uh, good pick because it's October. Gris, which I don't know what this is. I will look into this because this may be up my alley. Uh, the one thing I definitely want to play above everything else, Return to Monkey Island. I uh, really, really hope that pick Shane Bush that frightens and disturbs me is back. Yeah, is that a sequel or is that just a one-off? Uh, it's a sequel to the entire franchise. It's like it just came back, so they just rebooted it. They oh. didn't reboot it, but they gave it like a more proper sequel to continue. Okay. Uh, for those that don't have it, Ghostbuster Spirit Unleash. I play this regularly with the Tennessee Ghostbusters. This is the one of the two best Ghostbusting games. The franchise has ever been put out. This is made by... God, who is it? Uh, they make, like, the Jason game. They're currently making the Killer Clowns in Outer Space. Uh, these guys know how to do a uh, four-on-one multiplayer game. It also canonically takes place in continuity with 
the Ghostbusters uh, movie, uh, movie franchise. This is canonically right after um, Afterlife, but before uh, the Spangler family comes to uh, comes from Oklahoma to New York. Okay. Firefighter Simulator, The Squad, uh, made for the same people that do Police Simulator. Are these are people that did Farming Simulator because the title looks the same. Probably. Overpass 2. Uh, looks like a driving game. Tour de France 2023. Sure. I didn't, uh, know they had, I didn't know they had cycling games. Me neither. All I can remember is that John Cena can't go fast uh, skit. I love it to death. Tom Cancelli's Ghost Recon Wildlands for the PlayStation 4 only. It's a Tom Clancy game. I don't know what else you want. If you're on the highest per, uh, highest tier, we got premium games for PSVR 2 and Classics. Everyone will be able to get the last Clockwinder, which I hear is real good. Dino Crisis will be on uh, added to the PlayStation Store. Siren is coming. R-Type Dimension EX is coming. It seems like a pretty decent lineup for those that are on the extra like myself and when you guys get Dino Crisis and Premium, that's pretty decent. Just since everybody really wants Dino Crisis to come back. Yeah, I know they've been asked for that for a long time. Um, I might check out some of them. The last games I downloaded were whatever was in the last catalog and uh, Little Nightmares 2. I know that was a part of it, too, and I, I jumped on that immediately. Yeah, take a look at what Gris is. What is that about? Young girl lost in her own world, dealing with painful experience, light journey through the sorrow manifested in her dress, which grants new bows, navigate her fate in reality. Grow emotionally, see her world in different ways, revealing new paths and exploring is a serene and evocative experience free of danger, frustration, or death. Players will explore meticulously designed world brought to life with delicate art, detailed animation, and original score, though the game is through the game, light puzzles, platforming sequences, and option skill-based challenges will reveal themselves. So, and explore a walking simulator with some light puzzles, possibly? Yeah, it sounds like life is strange just inside your own head. Yeah. I'll definitely try and give it a shot. <laughs> Next up. Uh, via deadline, Universal is take, getting its own video game movie in Shinobi with Sam Hagar at the uh, helm. Uh, all we know is this Sam Hagar dude, uh, Hargrave, is directing for Universal. Uh, Ken Kobayashi from Sunny and Move On is writing the screenplay. Adapting the 1987 Ninja game following Joe Musashi as he confronts a great evil. Shinobi has spawned 14 games, including spin offs and ports. Um, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this, and I hope the CGI people are ready to animate a 14 foot long scarf that must be flowing in the wind at all times. That's what I'm curious. I I need to see like early concept art or something. I don't want to just throw it away because Shinobi's a Shinobi's a decent title. You can do a lot with it. You just don't please don't do the wrong thing with it. Correct. And you know they're really hoping to strike it big with like Sonic and Mario, but I gotta wonder if Shinobi's the right thing to do. Uh, I feel like there is more wiggle room with Shinobi, and they're not forced to tell one specific... Unless I'm wrong, and all the Shinobi games are literally back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back. To back to back to back to back. Um, I feel like you get a little bit more wiggle room, because it's like it's a known title, but not enough to where people are going to be die-hard about the lore and the designs, especially when it started off 
on the Sega with that art style. True. Uh, I mean, it could be worse. They could be trying to adapt Vector Man. Jesus. Uh, he clearly won't have anything to do with that. All right, moving on. We got James Gunn, our first look at Mr. James Gunn, who is showing a new character that may be coming, that will be coming to Peacemaker Season 2. Uh, a lot of people are making fun of it, but more honestly, this could possibly be Apache Chief. Um, That's what I was when I saw this, because... Uh... Also, is there going to be names with the name or problem with the names of Apache Chief, or is that okay? That's also what I have to ask. I couldn't tell you. Like, there's also other people that are uh, naming some other stuff in here. Uh, this could be Commandi from the future. We don't know because, like, the only thing we got that is making people think Apache Chief is the feather arm bracelet over here. This could be Commandi, Boy of the Future. Uh, now, Man of the Future. Uh, this also could possibly be a Mesoamerican or an Aztec American. This could also be El Dorado. That's entirely uh, within the realm of possibility. But someone says Red Wolf. Uh, that is a Marvel character, so he definitely won't be that. But yeah, possibly Apache Chief is going to be coming to uh, Peacemaker Season 2. Couldn't be the dude from um, Mortal Kombat, could it? God, I hope not. I'm kind of hoping it's one of the actors either from Reservation Dogs, Letter Kenny, or the uh, Predator movie Prey. Yeah. I'm hoping it could be any of those from there or somebody from Echo, as that was also a lot of indigenous people uh, casting that. Series, so it could be a lot of anybody. We just don't know uh, who it is, but like I said, a lot of us are aiming at that it is Apache Chief. How that's going to work out with that name, I don't know. I'm so curious to see what they do. No, honestly, I'm surprised that people on Instagram are adult enough not to say John Redcorn. That's a terrible. They could make him an extra if he has a tribe. He could be a character in there. True. Moving on over. James Gunn has also officially confirmed that Kyle Chandler it will be Hal Jordan moving forward. We reported that he was in talks, but now we have actual confirmation. Uh, welcome to Kyle Chandler and to the DCU. Hopefully your route will be much more peaceful than uh, Ryan Reynolds' time as Hal Jordan. I still say he was cast wrong, but I I want to say this will be good, but that's me being a Green Lantern fan. Time will tell. We also have James Gunn officially announcing that Aaron Pierre uh, will be John Stewart going forward. Um, I mean, I can see it right off the bat. He is not my first pick, though. I'll be completely honest with you. I was hoping it would be either Idris Elba, um, the gentleman from the Lupin series, or there was one other one. Um, David Jav uh, Jolly uh, Jollya from Star Trek Discovery, who okay. played uh, Booker, would also be fantastic as John Stewart, but I am more than willing to give this dude a shot. Um... People yeah, a lot of people um, mixed reviews on this uh, just because it feels like I feel like people are you know, kind of as a group saying like once they saw Rebel Ridge, like they're just going to throw him into everything they can and it's kind of coming true because he's already working on Lanterns and he's going to be Mufasa in the, or young Mufasa in the Lion King in December whereas I know they wanted a darker shade actor just because that is part of the struggles of John Stewart, even getting him into comic books back in the day. And for some people that semi feels like erasure, not taking anything away from this guy. Cause he is a good actor. They just don't think he is right for this role. I mean, if he shaves the beard, I definitely see it. Or he shaves the 
keeps the goatee and shaves the head. He definitely looks the part from like the animated series. People were saying that it's the eyes. They will have to do less CGI because the eyes are already there. Oh, he has green eyes? Almost. like Almost like a greenish hazel. Huh. I mean, I'm all for it. I want to see what this is going to be like. Again, huge Green Lantern fan here, so I'm open to it. Um, I'm surprised we have some discourse with this. I mean, I just wanted uh, the other actors because I like their acting, and, you know, Idris Elba's Idris Elba. I'm very curious to see what we do since these are all very much well into their adult life lanterns, so I'm curious. I'm curious to see if we even do an origin story or if we're just going to jump to all three of them just being in the midst of Lantern Hood. Um, he I'm is sure. the youngest out of them, right? I want it, yes. Real life and I think in the series. Because it's Nathan Fillion, Kyle Chandler, and him. What is Pierre posting? Rebel Ridge. I don't know what Rebel Ridge is. Rebel Ridge is the new movie. That is the movie that a lot of people are going to say they remember him from because it just came on Netflix, and that was not so much his breakout role, but that's finally the popular movie that he's starring in that everyone finally knows who he is. Even though he's been in other stuff before, this was his big shebang bang that he is starring in and got his face all over it. Gotcha. And then a few what? weeks later, Lantern casting. I said, I definitely see the resemblance to Jon Stewart, but uh, there are definitely, because I'm me and you're you, and you have more uh, better prerogative on this than I will, and hopefully Will can speak on this too next time. Uh, there are just some he, things he I just don't has, understand. He definitely has thoughts he would like to share. Huh? Will definitely has thoughts he would like to share. Well, I think Will was also championing other people as well. He was. He he very much has thoughts and opinions about this casting. But uh, no one, no one's knocking the guy. That's the that's the misconception. On no one's mad at him or thinking he'll do a bad job. They just wanted something, somebody who more so physically represented the role. Um, I said the only way you could maybe even this out just put Phil Lamar in the suit one time as like a retired lantern or something. Let him get his, you know, let, let him get a moment of live action glory for the path he has carved. All right. So now we're going to be moving into our videos. We have three tonight. Uh, I got to remember to mute myself on these things or we're going to have all those weird double talks again. I remember doing that the last time I ran it, so it's like, mute, mute yourself when you play these videos. All right, what's the first one we have? Uh, first one we're looking at is the upcoming Amazon Prime adaptation of Yakuza. Uh, right, that did it, just come out, or that uh, got announced. It will be coming out at the end of the, towards the end of this month, I think the 24th. Okay. I... Uh, We'll play for it on its own, and then we'll come back and chat about it because I definitely have thoughts about it because I have played all of them. I'm still on a bit of a break from Yakuza 8, but I have played everything, even the PlayStation side stories uh, that are only can be played in Japan. You got an emulator for that or just the jail? No, I just imported them because uh, the... What you would call it? The PSP was region free. Ah, smart. That's why I got all the Bleach, Heat the Souls, and all the Common Rider Climax for your games. Region free, region free PSP. I, don't know, I got a Xeno mod in my GameCube for that. However, it doesn't help if the game is fully in Japanese because I finally got Star Fox Assault. I can't understand shit. I think the sound is off. Is the tab muted? Because I can't hear it. Huh? 
Hop. I was saying, is the tab muted? Because I can't hear the trailer. No, the tab's not muted. Uh, I'm uh, muted. All right, we can just run it. And I'll see if it acts right. Uh, StreamYard has been year this, well, weird this week. Was not expecting the CGI dragon to show up in the show. I think that's just for like the trailer itself. I don't think that that may be like the opening credits or something. So is this uh, this is Yakuza. What do we know which game this is, or is this just Yakuza doing a TV show? This is a loose adaptation of the first game because the director did not let any of the actors play the video game for this. Because he says he's going to try and do his own spin on the first game and the franchise. To quote Ralph Wiggum, we're in danger. <laughs> uh, I mean, we'll see how he sticks the landing. I think this will at least introduce. I feel like when they do this type of stuff, they should start reproducing or like doing combo deals on the games. Because at least if people don't like it and people are like, you guys should play the games instead, at least they're like, presentably there and on sale at an affordable price for people to go into. Because I know nothing about Yakuza, but if everybody says, oh, this sucks, go play the game, I might be more inclined now. I'll just tell you right now, go play the game. You got <laughs> zero through eight to work through. Dude, those games are loaded too, aren't they? It's like a you putting a lot of hours into each thing, isn't it? Let me put it to you this way. you What you're doing is essentially playing a 26-episode uh, season of a show. Like, every Yakuza is its own season. Kind of what it seems like. And it just, like, when I see certain people do gameplays, I'm like, this is, like, upload number 50. How much did y'all... Like, I get it's an easy formula to replicate and update, but it is, like, the 2K of adventure games. It's like, you gotta find ways to remix it and make it new, but without just being boring reskins. Like, the streets and this environment that we're constantly on is forever changing. There's always new characters, and there's a thousand things going on in this game at once. And it's not even like you guys ran out of space on the disc. It's just like, and this is where we'll cut it off and just start building the next game from here. I mean, the franchise goes all the way from 1980 to 2024. Everybody ages naturally. Uh, the only time the game actually changes is when it changed from, changes from an action-adventure game to an RPG at uh, Yakuza 7. When Kiryu is no longer uh, the main character, we change protagonists. Even though Kiryu is in the game. Okay. But, uh, yes. 
So Yakuza 7 and 8 are actually secretly Dragon Quest games. Same way, um, what was the game? Sleeping Dogs is technically True Crimes 3? Yes. No, but they, like, actually state the reason it's a secret Dragon Quest game because in World, the main character's favorite video game growing up, because he's our age, he's a Dragon Quest fan. Mm. So his own delusions and inst uh, mental instability causes all his fights to become Dragon Quest-esque. Complete with job, qu job titles and costume changes. Interesting. So, yes. So, um, I don't know how to feel about this, in all honesty, uh, roping it back in, because this is Kiryu doing Kiryu things and Majima doing Majima things. Uh, I do like the actual actor for uh, Cosmo Kiryu because he was Kamen Rider Drive for a whole year. I find it hilariously ironic that his next big thing I've been seeing him in, he's a criminal after being a police officer for a whole year in Kamen Rider Drive as the title character. So now he's like the antithesis. He's Cosmo Kiryu. Hey, well, this is you're still talking about Yakuza. Or this is the next thing we're yeah. Yakuza, the guy who's playing the main character, got his start as a common writer. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, you have mentioned this before. Yes, he was the car themed common writer, common writer drive. Yeah, who was okay. a cop? Who was a cop? Okay. Um, I think they'll do okay. I mean, this is not the first time this has been adapted. Uh, they did a loose adaptation and made it into a movie, uh, which was kind of okay. Japan does a wonderful job of casting their people because they will find somebody in their actor industry who looks like the character. If you don't believe me, go watch the Ishido no Joe or the uh, Phoenix Wright live-action movies. They made live-action Phoenix Wrights? Yes. I know they had, like, I think an uh, anime they're producing now and have been spamming advertisements. I had no idea they made live action. Yeah, it was a whole live action movie. Interesting. They also made the classic remake, the classic anime of Shino no Joe. And you guys called it Star Blazers at one point, but also Space Battleship Yamato. Again, Japan will find people that look the part and can act. Yeah. But we're going to start looking at super weird stuff because Nintendo wants to sell us an interactive alarm clock. Yeah, what, what, what is this? I mean, it's not Labo, it's Alarmo. Roll it. I'm a trying.
So did Pokemon Sleep just not get enough downloads, or did they just forget to release it? Like, what are we, what are we doing here? I don't know. I always want to be woken up to the sounds of ha, yeah, ha. Hey, like, let, let me get the uh, what was it? Is it the Song of the Forest or whichever one is the most popular one from Wind Waker? Not Wind Waker. Um, Ocarina of Time. Like yeah. the one thing. The thing that they put in like in every Smash game. Uh, maybe the Force symbol from Ocarina of Time. Lost Woods. I think the song is called Lost Woods. Oh yeah, then that's Ocarina of Time. Yeah, if if I can wake up the Lost Woods, not a bad way to be awake. But I just first off, how much you about to charge me for a clock? That's the real question. Hundred dollars. Okay, I'm good. Uh. I don't want to be woken up to the sound of machine gun fire. I don't know why they thought that'd be a good choice right now. In this day and age? This day and age, we already got to play the game depending on where you live in certain areas. Fireworks or gunfire? Why do you want additional help? Is this why you're so in Power World to make up on the money you might lose when this releases? Now, now. <laughs> Remember I told you about being absolutely correct? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Lord. I mean, uh, I'm going to let the YouTubers take this one. Y'all have fun. I am morbidly curious just because I have ye old 1980s alarm clock by my bed. So having a new sound to wake up to may be nice, but like. Let's not, let's not scoff at tradition. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see how bad it gets. <laughs> Last week tonight, we're going to be looking at the uh, Mario and Luigi Brothership Overview Trailer. This is coming out in less than a month now. I still don't know how this game looks this good on a Switch. Like, I'm amazed. Also, the narrator for this game is going above and beyond. <laughs> He's a little bit extra. Let me pull it on up. Okay.
No, alrighty. That looks like a ton of fun. Uh, all the Mario and Luigi games have always been good, especially the first two. Uh, this is no different. Um, again, I'm very surprised how good it looks for it being a Switch game. I think this is what happens when you optimize within your limits for the Switch and just build around that because this looks like it's not pushed. Like, the animation style doesn't seem resource-heavy, and especially with it being turn-based, the animations are very limited in range and number, and I think that helps. But this very much looks like a high-quality in-Switch engine type of game, which is what... I feel like Nintendo should try to do more often, and then they branch out trying to bring in other people like Mortal Kombat, and then you just get the dumpster fire. But this, yeah, I just beat the first um, Mario and Luigi, what is Superstar Saga on Game Boy Advance last year? Mm -hmm. um, I actually went and picked up the 3DS remake right before the store shut down and the console officially died, so I have that plus Bowser's Minion. So I might actually pick this one up. It actually looks like it'll be a good... Uh, you need a break from other games. This seems like it'll be a decent uh, filler, or at least a decent run or addition to this franchise if you've played any of them. I mean, yeah, the last game was Paper Jam. That was like nine years ago. The main studio is shut down. Some of the people from that studio have been brought over to work specifically on this game. Hopefully it sells well enough to where Nintendo will put this back in more rotation and it doesn't go the way of F-Zero and Star Fox. Uh, you feel like they would have made a Star Fox show or something at this point. I'm surprised Nintendo is just is just now getting into movies and television. Yeah, the biggest issue though with Star Fox is that it's basically the same concept over and over and over again. It's almost like the same game being is being re released constantly. You could you could take Star Fox and make it a show. You could literally take 64, make it a show, make a planet each planet its own episode. Wrap that, wrap it up in twenty six episodes. Move right on to adventures. Same thing. Right back on to assault. Since those three are the only ones you dropped that are at least like canonically following the story, but isn't the same game copy and paste. Yeah, it worked for Kirby. And I have not touched a single Kirby game since uh, Nightmare in Dreamland. I have that in sixty four, but people still play it. All right, well, we are moving on over to our comics. As always, we like to thank Rick's Comic City because that's where I go get books. They are one of the best comic stores in all of Nashville. Um, we are looking at Absolute Batman number one. This is from the Corrupted Dark Side Universe from the All Out, Un all Out event. So this is the Dark Side Universe where Bruce Wayne apparently has the same physique from Alex from Street Fighter Three Third Strike. And that chest symbol comes off as a giant axe. This is the poor Batman, right? This is the poor Batman. Okay, I'm curious. Um, you know, with shoulder guards. With a lot of stuff. Um, this is written by Scott Snyder with art by Nick, uh, Nick Origata and colors by Frank Martin. Um... How do I put this? I, I enjoyed it for what it was. It was an interesting first issue. Uh, you find out a lot of stuff right away. Like Bruce has been friends with all of his major villains uh, in the main universe since childhood. Uh, his best friend is, a, is Killer Croc, who runs just a basic gym that Bruce works out of. He has a day job in construction which is why he looks like that. Um, his bat suit has multiple weapons, but that's where the similarities, like the bat suit is where the similarities ends. Like Alfred's alive and actively working against him because Alfred may be like a professional cleaner or something. Like I feel I, like I that's what they've they're... tried to allude to in recent stuff like even with the harley quinn show and then i know at one point they gave him his own show pennyworth so i feel like they are very much going for the alfred is a reformed or alfred has seen some things instead of just being before being a butler is what they've tried to paint into recent years 
Oh, even in Batman the Animated Series, the original Kevin Conroy Batman the Animated Series, he's a retired uh, military uh, military medic. Was he a U.S. military or foreign military? Brit, U, uh, UK. Okay, I do somewhat remember that being mentioned. Possibly also at one point was MI6. I can see it. Uh, this one, he takes a more permanent thing. Like, he has a personal shotgun, which Batman steals from him and makes non-lethal that shoots bat fletchets out of it and uh, whatnot. And the Alfred's probably the hardest part of people are going to have an issue with because Alfred's been dead for almost four years now with no uh, point of return yet. And we get an Alfred who is a super spy that is running cleanup for some sort of operational cartel, which may or may not be, in my personal opinion, their version of Checkmate in this universe. But the Batman is like weird and whatnot. Like, it's not a bad book, but we'll keep track of where it's going. And if we cover it again, it'll be because of something big. I know Will does not like this. He's not a fan. He does not like this at all. No. <laughs> uh, moving on over, we are looking at Green Lantern Civil War Corps number one. This is kind of like an annual. Uh, this is written by Jeremy Adams and Philip Kennedy Johnson with art by Salvador Laraca and art by Luis Guerrero. Uh, this is just kind of setting up the newest arc and merging the two Green Lantern books into one single book because uh, uh, John Stewart's book has officially ended, I believe, and it is now just one big Green Lantern book with some of John Stewart's stuff being in the backup. Um, this also sets up a new status quo for a couple things uh, such as different at different Green Lantern characters uh, once again, are having different colored rings. Some of the more well-known ones, uh, not necessarily the Earth Lanterns, but some well-known Green Lanterns are no longer Green Lanterns and serve another core. Um, also, returning act, returning characters from other core members also appear in this book, much to my surprise. Um, it was a fine read for a Green Lantern book. Uh, we're starting to put more focus on the Earth team than just a single lantern, which is always good. I believe Green Lantern works best when the core is at the forefront rather than just a single entity. So we got the, the so, so there's three Earth lanterns in this all off the bat. Uh, we have Guy, Kyle, or not Kyle, Kyle's in space at the moment. Guy, John, and Hal, and an alternate universe of Guy, which is more chill. Okay. Uh, like I said, it sets up some stuff, finishes it out some stuff, uh, just sets up the new status quo for the all-in moving forward. Um, it's it's okay. I, I dig it. I just want to see where it's going. Moving over to Marvel, uh, Steve Orlando is, uh, we are doing Conquest 2099, written by Steve Orlando and comes by... Abram Roberson and Jose Luis with ink by Abram Roberson and Oren Jr. with cars by Andrew Dollhouse. Pretty much this is the setup. Uh, Dracula reaches the vampire planet that he's been searching for this whole time. He finds out has been completely wiped out and left desolate by uh, the arachnoids, which are human spider hybrids. Uh, they are the same species that Spider-Woman 2099 is a part of. And it's just Dracula finding devastation of his home planet. His new home and his family. Because even his daughter Lilith is on the planet. And has been almost mortally wounded. Uh, and then other heroes come to play slowly. Is that, a, is that Miguel and Nova? Miguel and the last Nova, who is Wolverine. Hmm. And then is this Red Hulk rocking the Mr. T cut in the back? Yep, Red Hulk, the black chick is the new Star-Lord, and then everybody else is a vampire. Okay. 
Yep. We'll check in on this time to time because we like Steve Orlando. He's a nice dude and came on our show and we always want to promote his work. Yeah, shout out to Steve. Yep. Speaking of Steve, he did bring this up on our interview. Uh, his book Ewoks finally came out. Uh, this is written by Steve Orlando with art by a Arvo, uh, Alvaro Lopez and Laura Brag- Braga with car by Antonio Fabella. Um, this is Ewoks. For those of you that remember the old Ewoks cartoon from the 80s, Steve remembers that cartoon and elements of that cartoon are in this book. Be it by cameo or active uh, participation in this book, he remembers some stuff. Um, the Empire tries to invade Endor again with a small strike force. We're using... Uh, some bounty hunters like Forlom. Meanwhile, we catch up with Wicked. Uh, what? See what he's up to and what he's doing with other Ewoks. E, uh, fame either by cartoon or uh, the movie. So please go read this. It's going to be interesting to look to see what's going on with this because, I mean, you know. The Seawalks, they defeated the Empire and then gave us two really, really bad movies. I was going to say, they, um, it was like a short or a full length cartoon because I know they added it to Disney Plus like last winter. It's a full on cartoon. Uh, maybe I'll check it out for kicks and giggles. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, like, it can't, no, it can't be worse than the Christmas special. You are. Technically correct, which is the best kind of correct. Um, yeah, watch that with droids, and remember that these came out in the seventies or in the seventies, around the early eighty, early to mid eighties, is when these came out. <laughs> Understood. If anything, you'll definitely remember the theme song. I still remember part of it in my head. Next up, we're looking at Exceptional X-Men number two. This is written by Eve L. Ewing with art by Common Car- Carnero and cars by Nolan Woodard. Kitty probably continues to try to lead a normal life by bartending, goes to attend her friend's kid's uh, soccer game, which gets interrupted because a kid who's a mutant is being harassed, and one of the soccer players reveals himself to be a mutant. Uh, meanwhile, Emma Frost just kind of like peers in every so often to see how Kitty's doing until she makes her grand appearance at the end. Good book. I continue to like this series. Uh, I think this is one of the stronger X books. Um, it's been touch and go for a lot of people with these X-Men titles, but I am enjoying this one. Uh, so far it's about of the... Six that have dropped that are just X titles. I think it may actually be eight. I'm enjoying it. Is, uh, is this another post Krakoa title or is this all? Yes. It's... Okay. So this is what K- uh, Kitty and Emma Frost are doing. This is kind of like the new version of Generation X. Okay. Uh, like I said, I dig it, but I am a huge Emma Frost fan, so I am also biased. Uh, I will always say that up front when I am. Uh, moving on over, we got X Force. Uh, X Force goes to Florida and to try to stop Nucleo and run into Man Thing. Fun, much fun is had, and uh, somehow they have gone into the multiverse on accident. Shenanigans will ensue, I promise. Man Thing being in Florida is just the most comically accurate thing on the planet. This is true. Guardian of the Nexus and the Nexus Point to All Realities is a course in Florida. This is written by Jeffrey Thorne, art by Marcus Toe, colors by Eric uh, Arcasenega. Like I said, fun book. Really enjoyed it. The only reason I'm reading it is because Surge is in it and Captain Britain and uh, Aksani, which is Rachel. I enjoyed very much uh, Excalibur, where those two came from. And Surge is one of my favorite newer mutants that they made in the last 10 years because she's a elect, uh, 
Oh, someone who uses electricity to become a speedster. We don't have too many speedsters in the Marvel Universe. Not a lot at the moment, no. No. Not like the Flash, where it's like it's like every other person gets speed powers. Uh, there are very, very few speedsters. Some with much worse names, like the Wizard. Yeah. Yep. Moving on over to Indies, Dynamite is putting out a new Terminator book. This is written by Declan Shelby with art by Luke Sparrow and Colin Craker. Colin Craker is also the cars. Also, if you watch Comic Pop via podcast or YouTube, Sal, who is the owner and operator of Comic Pop, writes a backup story in this Terminator book and will be doing so for the foreseeable future. So, Anything go they it's a Terminator book. Uh, people are running from a killer robot they cannot stop. In this particular issue, it's an old couple who have been hiding out since a attempted robot uprising in 2018, and the Terminator finally catches up to them. That's pretty much the story. Okay. Transformers is our final book of the night, issue 13, written by Daniel Warren Johnson. Art by uh, Jason Howard and colorist by Mike Spicer. We learn the origin of Starscream in this. Um, he is still offline, but as he's in stasis lock, his mind is remembering how he even got himself into this mess, how he became a Decepticon in the first place, his friendship with Jetfire, his friendship with a... Decepticon named Genvo. Apparently his name was Ultrak at one point. He also meets Megatron who kind of solves that weird tank gun thing because in Agent Cybertron he turns into a handgun that kind of looks like a tank. <laughs> or can also possibly just flat out turn into a tank. But we get Starscream's origin story while his body is being salvaged by an unknown paramilitary force. We don't quite know if it's Cobra or G.I. Joe. We just know that they are working for the government and salvaging what is left of Starscream's body. Really good book. Really good artwork. Uh, it's interesting to see what Starscream was like beforehand because he was actually a pretty chill, youthful scientist. It was interesting seeing him in a uh, Transformers one, and now he was actually kind of like a courageous rebel leader. And before he became the weasel we all know and love. Well, you know, when your voice box is damaged and you sound like Steve Buscemi going slowly, I'm so surprised there. Bumblebee's made it. If this is going to be a trilogy, I don't. I thought he was going to lose it this movie. I'm surprised he finished the film. Well, with his voice box, yeah, because I know bees. Bees gets damaged, and clearly Starscream got his voice after, like... It, it was funny how he went from, like, wanting to fight and all to begging in, like, the span of a sentence and a half. That's about right for Starscream. Yeah. But those are all our books for the week. Uh, that is it for us this week, guys. We will be back next week with more news, more videos, more trailers. Uh... More talking about Dragon Ball. More talking about Agatha. As we have new shows we get to watch and uh, review. Finally. Thank God. Also Dan to Dan because... Oh, we didn't talk about Dan to Dan. Very yeah, quickly. Shout, shout out AJ Beckles. I actually got to interview him and his fiance at Nidus Quinones who plays Marco in My Hero. So props to the soon-to-be newlyweds. They, have, they both have projects out and are doing good for both of them. Yep, the rest of them. Uh, just going on real quick, real quick review for Dan to Dan. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I picked out a lot of references. The guy who writes this is a huge Tokusatsu fan. I mean, the opening itself is very Ultraman esque. The aliens look like they come from classic 60s Ultraman. They even do the little laser attack. Yeah, I, 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 I noticed that one. Uh, in episode two, uh, his color scheme, the main hero's color scheme is very Ultraman-esque of silver, white, and, uh, silver, red, and black. Uh, 
it's a wild series. It, it that's just it. like it's not super vulgar, but the stuff they do and say and the, the plot so far is so ridiculous. But I'm hooked. Like this is this. This is going to be the fall anime, I, I believe, over Daima, just because it's had a heavier rollout, I feel, than Dragon Ball has had right so far. They've really been promoting it, but I think they knew they had to promote it because they knew Dragon Ball was in the same season. I mean, that's and Dragon Ball going, that's and going for mission accomplished because I think they even had a theater event where they showed um, the first three episodes, I believe. That and the new theme that and the theme song done by Creepy Nuts, which if you don't know who they are, they are the guys that did the bling bong song for Mashal. Okay. So yeah, no, Dan to Dan, really good. If you look at the manga, uh the first chapter has the girl doing the common rider henshin pose, and uh Oka Run is doing the Ultraman, uh Ultraman beam pose. I know so, the girl in the first episode also does. I know I've seen that walk somewhere else, but like the angry stretch she does is kind of like Do Flamingo in One Piece, and I know that also comes from somewhere else. I know that I've seen that done in other shows. I can't think of where it, it may have been from a Studio Trigger anime because this screams Studio Trigger, but I don't think it is Studio Trigger. I'm like not kill sure. Kill. Well, someone will point it out, but I know I've seen that strut somewhere. It was just so good and so hilarious, especially when I was like, I can only get married to this one man. And it's like, what is your actual name? <laughs> like, oh, it's Ken Takakura. Yeah, your name is now this because you haven't earned that actual name. I'm curious to see the adventures of these two and how this plays out. And how long yeah. is going to keep this curse stuck to him? I will only say it was a bit uncomfortable in the first episode. Just some of the stuff that they were doing just came off a little bit risque, even for like someone who's watched a lot of stuff. They, they kind of went... Not too far, but they were getting close to going too far. I would say they, they pulled back just in time, whereas Goblin Slayer didn't and lost its entire audience. This is true. It really did. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a pretty accurate description. All right. So that's it, guys. Uh, please, dear God in heaven, remember, go vote. Yes. Please go vote, go vote, go vote. Go vote. November is right around the corner. Uh, this is the last week for early voting registration. Uh, please go to vote.org. That way you can find out where to vote and when to vote. Early voting is coming up. I will be doing it. Uh, I know a lot of us will be doing it. We need to stay away from the darkest timeline. Please. I mean, yes, The Daily Show will be absolutely hilarious for the last four years. But we don't have Noah, Trevor Noah, or Roy Wood Jr. to help with that. I need those. Party two. can only do so much. I, I need like those. If that, if we go to the darkest time, I need those two and like Don Lemon to start like a podcast or something. Because that, without him on CNN, it's not even fun anymore. This is true. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Hopefully, we'll be back. And you guys take it easy. Have a good weekend, folks. <laughs>